kicking off with uh, the main event, um, Cy Sperling, the hair club <laughs> man, <laughs> the, who comes out and gives Howard Finkel some hair. A toupee, and Finkel looks like he's in The Sopranos. <laughs> he, he looks great. He looks... Do you know what? I don't know what the hair club for men is. No. But Howard Finkel is bald, and whatever they do to him, he's no longer bald, yeah. and it looks like he's just got normal hair. It's amazing. I am. I would like to join the hair club for men. <laughs> You've got such rich, luxurious hair I, anyway. I want very hairy shoulders like Giant <laughs> Gonzalez. <laughs> I want a pelt that hides my yes. genitals so they look smooth. Yes. That, that toupee was absolutely worth <laughs> whatever work. it cost. It really was. Um, uh, uh, oh, FanFest. Oh, my God. FanFest looked grubby as fuck, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking I hell. It looked like the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Yeah, but at the same time, like, if you're into, like... Donkeys in a dunk tank. <laughs> you can, you can, how about a hill, hillbilly gym autograph? Would you like to call a match? Do a sumo wrestling. Pose with Paul Bearer in a coffin. Host a show and just get in the fucking ring and have a go. <laughs> I had it all. It was amazing. Yeah, you make it sound amazing, but then... Get in a coffin <laughs> with Paul Bearer. That's how that man got in trouble earlier on. But it was a hotel room. I know. I mean, there is something a bit weird about being in a, in a closed coffin when with you're 12 a, years old. With a, with a, with a old former man. genuine funeral home worker. <laughs> the shots they choose to promote FanFest. Yeah. So basically, it's like an expo where you can kind of meet the stars. That's right, yeah. Get your picture taken, get your signatures or whatever, and sell some shit to kids. Basically, yeah. one of the shots they use is Paul Bearer in a coffin. Yeah. But it's on a long lens. It's like really it far away. They never go, we my undertaker, or whatever they fucking talk. <laughs> It was like, slightly worse quality footage, <laughs> and it had a thing at the bottom that said "exclusive WBTS TV," and it would then say "long term abuser." <laughs> finally, came, the Coffin Man. No, they the called coffin, him. The they coffin called coffin him Mister Coffin. Oh, and then a man God. comes on and goes, "Take a seat. <laughs> Take a seat, Mister Bearer." <laughs> oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I just came here for cookies. <laughs> I brought cookies and condoms for no reason at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's make it very clear that Paul Burrow... Uh, he's dead. He's dead? Yeah, it's fine. You can say what you like. Can you say that? Is that right? Yeah, what? we didn't accuse him. No, no. He, is, he is not a Paul serial paedophile. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's the very least you can say about him. He is a... Uh, uh, Spooky man. He is a legend. A WWE <laughs> legend. <laughs> Why don't we get into this position? <laughs> it's because we talked about the grubby fan fest. But <laughs> Don't the Clown getting dunked... Was that actually even Don't the Clown or just a uh, subsidiary Don't the Clown? No, I, mean, I mean, I shouldn't think that Matt Ball was up that early in the morning. <laughs> At 12.30, the idea he's going to be up and showered, and with the makeup on, no chance. <laughs> they just paint it on him. Yeah. They just give him a touch up. Oh, yeah. He's still got it on from last night. <laughs> <laughs> His tie looks like vomit. Oh. Yeah. The fan fest looked great. My favourite bit is um, do a bit of commentary. So they've just got these little headsets, much like the ones we've got on now, and they've got a video from the thing, and they go, do a bit of commentary. <laughs> well done, then. Nowadays, they do have fan fests and mm. things, but what they don't have is all of this. And you certainly don't just get to get in a ring. Yeah. They had, like, a referee and two children just <laughs> fighting. Taking bumps. It looked fucking brilliant. I really, <laughs> I really liked it. They've since started doing the fan fests as part of the WrestleMania weekend that they do. Right, OK, yeah. And so I went to one in Texas yeah. with television's Alex Zane. Yes. Uh, we went there, and we had a fucking blast. It was really <laughs> good fun. It was, it was just really nice to be there. He took a photograph of me in some oversized packaging that they use for the legends oh uh, so you can get in and figure. be like a, oh, okay, so you right, can I get, get a photograph of yourself in that uh, we saw some matches and then we got to speak to Superfly Jimmy Snooker yay what, what did you talk about <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys talk he about Alex was a girl yeah so then he tried to smash his head in <laughs> <laughs> um, a and little then... joke there about Jimmy Snooker murdering women <laughs> There's only one concern in every human being's mind, and especially deep down in their soul. I'm here because the action that goes on here is a superior thing for individual. I love the challenge, and that's what I'm here for. And all you TV people in Wonderland. Woo. Do you feel blame? Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like wolves go out for friends? Get friends, but 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 but
And then mm. there's a shot where Macho Man just appears <laughs> in a theatre. But I'm not really sure whether that's part of <laughs> WrestleMania 10. Yeah. He goes in after his match. He goes next door to another theatre where they're showing Why it on they're closed showing circuit it? TV. See, now I thought that was the case, yeah. but I couldn't figure out. That comes out of nowhere because who knew they were still doing closed circuit TV yes. when pay-per-view is big. But mm. it's sold out. I mean, it's mm. loads of people. And, and then Macho Man just, just sort of runs in and goes, eh, and I he just gets mobbed. Day, uh, Virgin Media were offering the last pay-per-view on WWE Money in the Bank. And they're offering that on an advert for 15 quid, mm. which is cheaper than it used to be when it was on Sky. Mm. Things used to be much more expensive. But before the network came along, the network cost nine ninety nine a month. So that I, seems very strange. I can't imagine those pay-per-views are, are making any money anymore. Uh, We're at the main event. Yes. Uh, it's Yokozuna <laughs> versus Bret Hart for the WWF uh. Championship. Um, they bring in the, the timekeeper is Jenny Garth from Beverly Hills 90210. Yes. At the time, a huge star. Felt like a, a Ooh. someone off the telly is here. Someone <laughs> off real telly. And then uh, Roddy Piper comes in as the guest referee. Mm, yes. Um, he's pleased to be there. Um, <laughs> he is. I think, you know, he's sort of, he's sort of back. This match itself is... <sighs> Oh, I mean, it's fine. It doesn't really feel like a main event. Well, you've just seen some crazy shit with a ladder yeah. that you've never seen before. Yeah. But usually what they do for the main event, they usually have a little buffer, don't they? But yes. Yeah. Do you reckon that 10-man thing was supposed to sit here? Uh, yes, it was. Right, yeah. okay. And they, they obviously are just, the time has gone. Mm. Um, it's a funny thing. I mean, the only thing you can think is that the ladder match went long. Mm. And this does tie in with the point where Shawn Michaels is, as I said, becoming the shittiest man on earth. <laughs> he becomes very powerful and he becomes becomes a real politicker. He, he became Let's so bad. Let's ask the ladder, shall we? <laughs> Let's ask the ladder if that's a good idea, Vince. <laughs> he becomes so bad. The Rock never worked with Shawn Michaels. Right. And that was supposed to be down to the fact that Shawn Michaels had been really rude to his grandma, who was a wrestling promoter. Yeah. And The Rock refused to ever have anything to do with him. You can read all the stuff about the 90s. It's just this big, everyone's off their face, and Shawn Michaels has gone mad with power. <laughs> and it's a fascinating thing. But you can tell in that sort of thing, he's putting on the best matches. Everything that was going on never affected him in the ring right and so he's putting on these matches but you get the impression that he's going along with this match because he's stealing the show mm. and so when you get to the main event they're having to squash it in and Bret Hart is naturally getting furious with the whole thing mm. and this starts off really this problem between the two of them about who is the top man in the company I which see. will ultimately change the business yeah. exciting isn't it yeah, it is exciting a bit of a shame they, they end this with Yokozuna getting pinned just because he falls off the ropes and that <laughs> as a sort of end for Wrestlemania uh, you know come on can we not think of anything a bit better than that <laughs> Yokozuna in this though does two really late kickouts when he's being pinned okay. he goes one two and he suddenly gets his thing up yeah. and at the time again no one had really seen that before it's a funny thing you see it all the time now mm. the last second kick out mm. but Yokozuna as a big bloke it doesn't look like he's going to do it and he does and you suddenly go Christ actually he's got amazing timing there yeah. and the crowd really fall for it they're like oh <laughs> it's really exciting he's, he really is good and so uh. as far as I'm concerned the last minute two count kick out two and three quarters is invented by Yokozuna <laughs> and you see it all the time well, now well you see Lex Luger earlier on doing the uh, lift the arm up sort of thing and he goes one yeah. two and then he goes oh and his arms just sort of go whoa like that shaky, and it's just like, shaky 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 and it's like that's not a natural <laughs> thing you would do if you were trying like you'd sort of go yeah. you'd sort of go up a bit and it's funny how we accept that as being a thing that you go I understand that but <laughs> yeah. you actually sort of if you think about it you just go why are they doing that <laughs> why would they start doing a ticking off when you're essentially choking them no 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 <laughs> no, no, no 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 no, no. <laughs> yeah. and then the last bit ends with just all of the, the good guys coming to the ring to celebrate Bret Hart. A spontaneous decision that by Randy Savage. Oh, really? He said to everyone, get out there and let's put him on the shoulders. And I think this was because they'd been through some bad years of watching everyone big leave and they were, I think, battening down the hatches a bit. Oh, okay. They're aware WCW were doing well and I think they were feeling a bit with the trial coming up as well, mm. uncertain. And I think it's a funny thing where they all get together and just go, let's be strong. Yeah. Let's do this. And it's little Gorilla Monsoon turns up as well at the end. <sighs> little Gorilla. Oh, little Gorilla. So nice. Nice. And they end it then with Owen Hart standing on the ramp, looking at Bret Hart, going, I'm going to get you. Yeah. I'm going to get you. In a way, the perfect ending. It's yeah. done really, really nicely. 